All right, it's weird to be saying this while we're still in March, but fire weather season has officially begun. As you can see, there's a red flag warning in New Mexico, Texas, very western Oklahoma, Colorado, Kansas, and Nebraska. And we're gonna be going over the entire fire weather forecast, the reason this is happening, and the outlook for the rest of the week. But the first thing I wanna show is what exactly is a red flag warning? And what exactly creates fire danger and fire weather? Well, this sums it up pretty well. Breezy winds plus warm and dry conditions equals critical fire danger. And that's pretty much what we're seeing over the next few days for all those locations that I just talked about. It's gonna be extremely warm, it's gonna be extremely windy, and there's not much water vapor in the air. It's dry too. I know that's weird because we've been having so much rain recently, but these locations, not so much. The vegetation is pretty dry. So somewhere in the southeast that got five inches of rain last week, that's not, that's not the same story for northeastern New Mexico where the vegetation is extremely dry. So that's ex pretty much summing up what a fire weather, critical fire weather is. It's warm temperatures, breezy conditions, not a lot of moisture in both the vegetation and the atmosphere. The real reason behind this though is there is a record heat wave that's gonna be building into the country basically starting today and lasting until Saturday. And it's actually gonna intensify Friday and Saturday where we could start to see temperatures 20 to 30 degrees above average. And it's really already hit. I think New Orleans has been getting record breaking temperatures I think for the last two or three days and it's, the trend is most likely gonna continue throughout the rest of the week. And as you can see, it's true for basically the entire eastern half of the country. And uh, that place, the exact area where we have this fire weather warning, northeastern New Mexico, northern Texas, Oklahoma, you can see this is showing temperature anomalies. How high above average are the temperatures? You can see 12 to 15 degrees above average for this time. So the heat is there. That's already checking one of the boxes. We've got the warm temperatures. And if we actually look at the temperatures today, you can see it's pretty warm. Amarillo, that's gonna be about 79 to 80 degrees. Northeastern New Mexico is probably gonna be in that low 80s, high 70s range as well. And you can also see the winds on this map. And the reason is this surface low pressure that you see just to the left of Kansas. And Kansas is in the mid 70s as well. That's why we have the fire weather warning up there. But this low is causing all these strong winds on the surface. And you can see they're coming from the south and southwest. And they're, they're pretty gusty. They're coming in at maybe 30 mile per hour gusts. And when you combine that kind of wind with these warm temperatures, if just a spark falls and starts a little fire, that can spread into a massive blaze in no time. So that's the reason there is a fire danger. They're afraid that if a fire starts, it can get out of control in just a flash. And this is showing the relative humidity at the surface. That's the other big part of this. You got the high temperatures, you got the winds associated with this low right here. That's what's causing all these really strong wind gusts. But we also have really low relative humidities. Think of a place like Florida, Relative humidity right now is probably about 80%. That's why it feels muggy when you go outside. Well, the exact opposite is true exactly where we have this fire weather warning in northeastern New Mexico, Texas, even Colorado, which I would think at this time would be snowy. We're in March, it's basically still winter. But no, there's a fire weather warning in Colorado. And it's one, warm temperatures, winds, and this relative humidity, as I click through the day Wednesday, you can see, if you don't know the color schemes, these greens and blues, that indicates where it's extremely moist. So in the mid-Atlantic, where there's uh, some severe weather going on right now, that's extremely moist. The relative humidity is into the 90% because there's a storm right there. These browns indicate relative humidities that are around 10 to 15%. That is extremely low, and you can see they have moved in to basically exactly where we're seeing this fire weather warning. New Mexico, Texas, Colorado, Kansas, even into Nebraska a little bit. Those brown colorings right there indicate 10 to 15 percent relative humidity, which again, another, another box being checked 
for what can lead to extreme fire danger. And really the reason behind this early start to fire season is what the jet stream is doing right now. And when I look at the jet stream, I like to think of it as the separation between warm and cold temperatures. That it's the really warm temperatures and the really cold temperatures that come down from the cold temperatures come down from the cold Arctic, warm from kind of the equator and they meet in the mid latitudes. And where they meet, there's a huge pressure gradient which creates extreme winds, aka the jet stream. And what the jet stream is doing this week, it's going from basically flat west to east to a giant ridge. That's what's causing this record heat wave. And you can see this jet stream really goes from Southern California all the way up into the Midwest and then down into Florida. That is a massive ridge and it actually gets bigger as we move into Friday and Saturday. So like I said, it's the separation of warm and cold temperatures. So south of the jet stream, that's where you get the warm temperatures. That's why we're getting this record heat wave that actually started yesterday and it's going to be lasting into Saturday. It's because of this massive ridge that is building over basically the entire eastern half of the country. You can see this a little bit better on the 500 millibar map. Right here, it pretty much looks like it's flat across the country. These blue colorings represent where the below freezing temperatures can be. And that giant ridge just builds in through Friday and Saturday. And you can see by Friday, these warm temperatures have built all the way into the Midwest. And really that's really what that's allowing is these warm temperatures that you'd normally see on the tropics move into the south and southeast. So that's really the mechanism driving this insanely early start to fire weather season. And as I showed, it actually gets worse Friday and Saturday. That ridge just continues to build in, goes from basically flat all the way up into the Midwest. So by Friday, this is showing the temperature anomalies where in that first map we had maybe 10 to 15 degrees above average in our fire weather area. On Friday, it's gonna be about 20, 25, maybe 30 degrees above average. That is not what you wanna see. And as it turns out, that low is going to be sticking around on Friday too. This low is over Utah and Colorado, and it could bring a little snow to Utah, but what it's gonna be bringing to this fire weather area is those extreme winds. This is Friday, and remember this low was causing the extreme winds today. Well, this low is still there, and the temperatures are actually going to be warmer. So we could actually see this fire weather warning get worse throughout the week, as you see these strong winds are still building in, and now Oklahoma City, you're into the mid 80s. Lubbock, 82, Amarillo, 72. So, the, there's no rain for the, this area in the coming days. The vegetation is still going to be dry. The relative humidity is still going to be low. The winds are still going to be there. And it's getting hotter. So this is going to be something that's going to be very interesting to follow throughout the coming week. I want to go back to just the warning map so you can see exactly where this fire weather warning is. Again, northeastern New Mexico, very northern Texas and western Oklahoma, building into Colorado Kansas, and Nebraska. And this is something I'd never actually found before, but it is a pretty awesome feature that is on the National Weather Service website. This is the map I showed you. Critical fire weather conditions gives you the recipe for fire danger. But you can actually click in, see today, we got 83 degrees, really into the mid 80s, and possibly get in into the high 80s in some places. And like I said, the winds are also there. 30 mile per hour winds, that is extremely strong. And what that does, if a fire starts, and you know, normally a fire would just maybe go, go out a little bit and then die down. Well, the winds can actually pick up sparks, throw them, or m just move them downstream of the wind, and then start another fire. And then the winds can move that fire and it just continues to spot. And that's how fires can really get out of control fast. And you see the winds are there, 30 mile per hour winds. That's, that's pretty strong right there. I'll leave you with some kind of tips to prevent wildfires because like I said, just one little spark could spread into a massive blaze in no time. Don't toss lit cigarettes on the ground. That seems like that makes sense. This is an interesting one that I never really knew. 
do not drag tow chains on the ground. This is actually how a ton of massive wildfires start. I believe some of those giant ones that we've had in California in the past have started because of chains on the ground. What that does is if you're driving, a chain is dragging behind your car, creates a bunch of sparks, and think about the vegetation along a highway. It's typically grasses and they're typically pretty dry. Well, those sparks hit those grasses and then it gets out of control in no time. So that's, that's an interesting one. It's not really one you think about, but leads to a lot of extreme fires. Uh, do not park and drive over tall grass. That seems pretty self-explanatory. Do not leave a campfire unattended. And, you know, maybe just don't even start a campfire at all. You can wait a week. There's probably going to be some less extreme fire weather danger on the way. So maybe just hold off on the campfires for a day or two. And I'll, I'll leave you with the last one. The best way to stay prepared, check the weather forecast. So if you want to stay prepared, you can subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be doing fire weather forecasts like this throughout fire season. This is just the first one I'm doing because today is day one. So if you want to stay updated with fire danger, you can subscribe to Hold Handy Weather.